Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. We all love APIs. Trust me, getting API is fun, but how do you document your API? Do you go use Postman? Yeah, that's a good tool, but today I want to show you how to automate that workflow. That means as you write your code, you are also writing the code for your documentation right there in the code. And for this, this is for a Go programming language, and we are going to generate this beautiful API that we are looking at right from our code. So let me show you ex an example. Let me. This is what I have currently. So for example, when I click on try it out and then execute, you see that we've hit this end point and then our code has returned this response to us. That is beautiful, right? And you see that we also have like some grouping going on, all that. I'm going to show you everything. How about a post request? For instance, for us to make this post request, we need to have uh, an authorization key, which we are currently not using, but you can click on this authorize and then you put your bearer, you put some of your token here, save it. And subsequent calls, you can use that. So for instance, when we go to this place, try it out. Let me put some random email and uh, it doesn't matter, whatever you put here would work and you click on execute, automatically you should have, as part of the response, look at the bearer token that we put, it's part of the payload that I'm sending back intentionally to show you guys that for real, we can capture it from here and have it in the code and do whatever we want to do with it. So for me, I think this is a fantastic tool. So if you've been struggling on how to automate your documentation workflow, please look no further, just sit back, watch the video and enjoy. All right, so what we are going to do, um, we're going to use this tool, but before I talk about this tool, I want to show you this beautiful HTTP library that I just wrote some few days ago. I want you guys to go take a look at it and let me know what you think, it's quite powerful. For me, the most fun thing I've added to this library is the ability to chain requests and also add rate limiting is really powerful. You can come to like at the bottom of it to see, for example, how to do file upload, it supports middleware. It's a powerful library. So guys, go check it out. Remember to click on star and then let's promote this library. All right, back to where we were. So we're going to use this swagado slash swag. And um, this is a library that we are going to use on to do our documentation. The most important thing about this library is you need to have it installed. And when you have it installed, you should be able to access it from your command line. So you should be able to type this swag. Now, when you use Go, when you use Go install, what usually happens is Go is going to put the binary in your Go path. So it's going to be Go path slash bin. So it's important for you to have this in your environment. So as part of your path, this Go path slash bin should be there. That is the only requirement you you need to have in order to complete this tutorial. And then when you have swag installed, you are able to run swag and that is it. All right, so let's start building our project. The first thing I go, I'm going to do is to go do the regular go mod in it. And this time around, I'm going to do GitHub slash my username, which is Joe Fazi, and then I'm going to say documenting, let's say API doc or something like that, right? And it say go mod already exists. Okay, great. So I'm just going to replace this one now. Right. Then we are going to touch main.go, which is going to create a new main file here. And as you know the drill, we are going to make this we are going to make this a main. This is not a go class, it's really for us to I just want to increase the font a little bit. It's really for us to see that I don't we want to just copy code from somewhere and paste it here for you guys, right? So I want to make sure that um, we, you see it step by step how I'm building this, right? So now that we have our main, the next thing we want to do is to go, let me bring in Gene. So we are going to use Gene for this one, Gene default. And um, another thing I like to do is to turn off Copilot. So I, ha I use Copilot in my code, but I want to have it turned off. Exactly. All right. So now that I have Gene, as I want to create, um, I want to create a, a route group. So this is going to be API slash v1 slash user, something like this. Then I have this like this. All right. So we are going to have some endpoints. The first one will be when you go to slash users, right? And um, let's, uh, for now, 
let's just comment it out i want to make sure our gene is running properly and then we do run since we don't have anything currently running we can run gene on port 8080 which is the default port for this one that we have here this 8080 all right so let's look at it we need the users get users post users and then get users slash username all right i'll come back to that but quickly we need to import um gene to import gene you need um to have let's say import github.com slash jingonic this one this is what we need and i think with that we should be able to run go mod let me increase this a little bit go mod tidy that way we download it and now everything should sync up properly go more tidy everything's it's working all right now that we have that the next thing i like to do is to run the code so let me just take that one out now let's run the code go go run main and our api is running of course there are no routes yet right so let's add some um let's add some things here first the title of our api which is this one so which is this one so i'm going to bring this one over and um i just say title i will say this but this time around i'm going to say youtube right so title version so basically this is all you have to do you just come to keep adding the description um this helper sample yeah nothing special i want to make sure there are no spelling errors and after that i like to put some space and then i can say contact let's have our name contact dot name let's say i'm by joseph this time and then contact dot url the website so we can just say um just put uh, github.com slash geofazi and i put contact dot email and then sample email at email.com or something like that all right next we want to we can add some like the host of our api host all this annotation is what swag is going to use to generate our remember our api is listing on port 8080 so um then the base url the or the base path is api v1 i think that is it so now that we have this in place we can go ahead and generate our documentation now so i'm going to run swag init from this directory swag init and it's saying that it has created the docs slash docs.go so let's look at the folder so it it created this folder which you should commit um as part of your code to your repository so we have this now we're just going to close it so with that in place what can we do can we see anything now the answer is no you can't see anything yet in order for you to see something we need to import that doc folder and some more food and some more libraries so let's do it the first thing you want to import is the doc um so this is our let's say go mode now this is our go module so it's our go module now slash docs right this is the docs all right so we're bringing that in first we also need to bring in the swagger files which we can get from github.com slash swagado swagado this one and we also need the gene swagger which i'm this are i'm just typing them renaming them right and i can bring it from the same place and this one is the gene integration so if you are using a different framework you should find your own integration there and use that now we need to map the url in order for us to see it in the browser for example 
when you go to the browser, you have to go to slash swagger, then index.html in order for you to see it. So this that is exactly what we are about to do. All right, so I'm going to keep put this one here presently. There's nothing there, so let's go back. Okay, so the, to do the URL, I'm going to come here, say r.get. So it's going to be slash swagger. Let's make sure that is what we have here, yes. Slash swagger, slash any, so it can be index or HTML or whatever, anything we want. So we get this gym swagger. Oh my goodness. Um, the IDE just cleared everything that we typed there. It's really sad. Okay. Let me do gym swagger. This is what we are going to do. There's a wrap handler there. Then swagger file. This is what we had. And then there's a handler on it. So we need to go back here and do it again. Um, github.com github.com slash swagger Jim uh, Swagger, this one. And the other one is the Swagger files, which is from almost the same place. So I'm going to copy and paste and then do the files. After that, go mod tidy. We have them downloaded. So this is going to sync up quickly. Our ID takes a while now. All right. Everything syncs up neatly here. This one, we can add the error handling to get rid of this squiggly line. If there are no if there are errors, we can log filter. Let's just simple stuff. All right. So let's look at what we have done. We got the file, we imported the doc and then brought in these two libraries to create the mapping for our URL. Great, so time to run go, run main, and we have it. So look at the URL. So time to go to the browser now, re reload, boom. Welcome, we have our API, but no operations defined in spec. Makes sense, we are making progress. So let's go back. Now I'm going to create the, the routing. So let's start with um, the user endpoint. And so we can do user route group. I'm going to use the route group here. So it's going to be, we have, um, let's say API slash V1 slash user, something like that. If you want, you can do V1 like this route group. API, API slash V1, right? Something like this. And uh, this one becomes this, right? And you just use users here. And boom, better arrangement. So we can do, when you, when you visit the users, we can do controllers. Um, let me, or handlers. Let me handlers get user get users so this is the first one we are going to map to return all the users now we don't have handlers yet so let me stop my the running program and create a handlers directory and then i'm going to touch handlers handlers dot go now i'm going to open it up package will be handlers and what we need we need to have um we need the handler uh, handler for or get users so let's do that funk get or get users so this will be c gene context all right that's oh i'm not going to write anything there now then main we come to main everything syncs up correctly because we have now imported our handlers okay so what do we intend to return from this handler we need some model so let's go make that model and then touch model slash model dot go that one we can go to model now create a package called model and then we define some types so i'm going to define a user type i'm also going to define a country type for the countries that we are going to use later for the user type i want to keep it really simple let's get to 
let's use um, username just like we had and um, our username full name and uh, let me bring the string here full name email and uh, it's active let's make that one a boolean and we should be able to get our id to help us i think there's a way to get the id to insert the json yeah do like this and you have all the json in quickly without wasting your time all right well i don't like how the json is formatted i want this to be this like this and it's active to be this all right fantastic how about the country just name so we just bring the json and that is it so we need um let me create some variables here and please i'm doing this because we don't have a database so i just want this data to um help you guys understand this better so users will be a slice of um user and instead of typing everything out i'm just going to copy uh, what i have initial earlier and bring it here and then we have um, users and then we can also get like add some functions like how to get all the users get all the countries and bringing all that in now so let's look at them there's nothing special we have list users that return this this one this slides then get users we just find the user by username and return it create user we just append to this um um, slides please don't do this in production because in a concurrent environment this is not going to behave very well so you want to have something like a mutex to control your um write and read access is very important and then the last lastly we need a um, country list so let me create a country list just like we did for users here yeah? and then i just have like random countries here so this is our model nothing special and we are done we are not going to come to this file anymore so next we are going to go back to the um controller so let's go to handlers and in the handler we want to return users so i'm going to say users uh, model dot list user this is a function and then we just return sorry not return we just call c um json and then what we want to do http status of okay and then i'm going to return something called user response that is going to have a data and uh, users now but this user response doesn't exist yet so let's come here and create it struct but in there we are going to have data that will point to a slice of model.user and we are going to have a json of data and the data so this is what we have for this so let's run it let's run the code now go run main.go and we go to the here yeah, nothing has changed here too right but let's at least see if our api works so we have api slash v1 slash users right great our api is working so let's go back to the documentation now that we have one endpoint to document how do we document it very easy same approach annotation first of all let's add the go documentation like regular go documentation return list of all users from the database this has nothing to do with swagger documentation this is the standard go documentation right but now here is where we're going to swagger it so we need the summary we need the summary and the summary is get i'm just going to um, bring this same one here then we need a description description can be bigger so list or we can say list all users and then bring this one into the description then what else we need tags tags is a way that you this so what we have here are tags this grouping so like countries and users these are tags so we use that to group the api so so let's get let let's put tags call um tags let's call this one users what else when we have a success case which is 200 okay we are going to say the status is 200 and we are going to return an object this object that is here and the type of the object that we are returning is user response this is very important for you in order for it to work very well and then the router the path so the API here will be API v1 slash users 
and it's a get request. All right, so with these annotations, let's go and regenerate it. So it's time to run swag in it again. And everything has been regenerated. Now go run main for us to go back to our browser. This is the one we are working on and refresh. And you see, we have our first endpoint. Now this is the, some of the models that we are currently using, right? Everything is right here. Now I'm going to say, try it out as a cute. And you see, 404 page not found. Why? Because we already set the base route and this is no longer working. So let's go ahead and remove it and leave only this one. Regenerate, run go again and go ahead and refresh and try it out, execute and you see our data is right here. Something to, um, like some things to look at for is, this is your description, this is your summary, this is your router, right? And everything looks really great. The next thing I want us to do is the post, the create user endpoint. The create user endpoint is interesting because that is where we are going to need the token. So let's work on that. So function create user, right? And I'm going to just copy this here quickly. The first thing I would like to do is what we expect from the browser. We I'm going to say request is going to be of type of user. So this is the model we expect from the browser. Let's try to get Gene to press that data. Um, Gene has a con in the context you see, sh should bind JSON. So you now give it the object reference, which is request. And if it doesn't work, there are some errors for any reason. You want to return an error here, right? So I'm going to copy this one here, but I'm going to change it to bad request. And this one, we are going to change it to gene.h, which is just a map, and then what we want to return, and then error.error. .error. So in case of anything, this is what we are going to return. Why do we have a uh, star squiggly line? Great. Now that solves the problem, of course. Don't forget to return. After that, let's say everything works. Um, here, basically what we are going to do, we are going to create a user by calling model.create user, passing the request, which is also a user instance. And of course, we check for error again. This is a classic way of programming in Go. We check for error again. If everything goes where well, we need to return um, what status we want created. And uh, what do you want to send out? I think for now, we can just send the same user out, all right? And I need to change this to this. All right, so this is our API, but of course we've not added the documentation. We've also not mapped the route. So let's copy everything from here and bring it down here and change this one. Um, say create new user and then say create new user. And I'm just going to use the same thing just to save us some time. Tag is user. Sources will be created, will be 201, right? So that is it. Sources will be created 201. The type of object we are returning now is model.user, right? You see it? And this time around is a post request, but we also have failure. Failure will be bad request. Bad request is 400. So we can say 400. And when we get the 400, we have, um, we're returning an object too. Um, and right now we can define it if we want. Let's say type um, error response. Um, error response. I'm going to change it shortly, error error response and uh, I just say message string. So I'm going to tell it that we are for errors, we are returning this one. And here, what I'm going to do is to change it to a message. Is that what we put? Error dot error. Exactly. So copy the same line down there. All right, everything looks okay. 
to me we go to main quickly and then we register this copy and paste the same path but now we're going to change it to post and we hopefully if there are no typos or anything we should be good regenerated and run the code let's go to the browser refresh and we have our post endpoint try it out and let's see we run it it say um bad request um jason you know probably didn't pass very well but it makes sense where is our body right so we don't have the the body created very well so let's we forgot to add the body so let's go there to our api again and add some more stuff to it so let's say we accept json and we produce we produce json and our um, um i think that should do it we need to, when we add the param the param user body would be model dot user and uh true then let's see it got a user all right something like this all right so let's run it again and then go here let's go back to the browser refresh now when you look at the body this is it this is his name that we gave it to user and this is now the body and look at it's required so now when we run it look at the body everything should be fine i just run it now it was well executed it's a bad request and then let's see why um you see eof means end of file so something didn't um, add up really well here so let's look at what's going on so i brought this same binding here it doesn't make sense so this yeah so we need to we need to take out this this is that was the problem so yeah all right let's run it again and this time around it should work and of course we have the response body and everything works perfectly well all right so we have two endpoints documented and before I, I go ahead to add the third one which is really simple and maybe you can take that as an assignment but i want us to, i want to show how to add a security path right so you can collect them um, tokens and everything from the api so let's open the code and then let's look at our main we need to do something in main first so let's go to main and here i'm going to start typing here add more annotation so i'm going to add a security definition um security security hope i don't want to make a typo here definitions uh, let me type it again security definitions and then api key dot api key we are going to name it bearer token something like that and we're going to say okay in it's going to come in header and the name will be authorization that is what we the header that we're going to use um, i think that's okay um for now now when we go to we can recompile now swag let's run swag again open main and you see some changes you see now we have it but it's not going to work yet if you look at all the apis none of them requires um api token your authorization yet so how how do we say this one requires authorization really really simple so let's go and get that done so if you look at the create user endpoint that is the one that we want to mark as um secure or something we can come to any place maybe here and say at security security remember what we type here right main remember this is what we type right so we bring it here and um, that should be it so i'm going to drop it down sorry i'm going to i need to regenerate the documentation now uh, run it again boom you should see the lock right 
So you click the block, you can put your, look at the API key thing that we put, look at the name that we put, everything, name is authorization, it's going to be in the headers, fantastic. So when you, to test that, you know, that is, um, to test that we are really getting the value. So let's just come down to this place and say, um, let, let me do auth like this, c dot get header. And I'll say authori authorization. And if you want, we can even just log it. Just log it like this. So you can see it from the in the console instead. All right. This one we don't need to regenerate the code because we've not changed anything in the documentation. So I'm going to come here. I will say um, Biera. This is what we usually type in Postman. Then one, two, three, or something like that. Save it. Now, when you go to the create endpoint and you say try it out, you send it, and then let's go to the console. You see that our authorization came. Authorization. This is what I type here. Biera one, two, two, three was what we type in that um, model pop up. All right. So this is really, really good. I'm going to stop the video now. Thank you for watching. And for me, I think it's a fantastic way to document my APIs. You can add all this as part of your workflow, um, like your Jenkins, your GitHub action, or put it in the make file, a way to just automate the whole thing. And it's really, really powerful. There is a whole, come to the documentation here. Um, I'm going to leave link to the documentation come to the documentation and see what you can do there's so like so much more you can do like for me the most helpful place to look is also the apm this example and especially this one this one is quite detailed so you can go ahead and look at like the different different way to add the annotation they have a whole bunch of annotations here that you can copy and try it out the good thing is when you change something and you run the swag in it and it, uh, you know you have an error or something it reports the error immediately and you can go ahead and make the adjustment for me that was really helpful all right thank you guys so much for watching um please if you're not subscribed to my um, channel consider subscribing i bring you really really nice tutorials every time the next tutorial i'm going to do will probably be on deployment so stay tuned bye for now